So this is Math 142, and we are working on section 5.5. .5. Now in this section, we are going to um, keep working with the unit circle. And let's start by thinking about, uh, let's say that sine of, of some angle, I'll just call it theta, is equal to 1 half. And I want to know what theta is. I want to know what angle would return a sine of 1 half. So, Basically, if I'm looking at my my unit circle, uh, what I'm what I'm looking for is a y value of one half. What angle is associated with it? You know, sine typically uh, as a function, we input the angle and it spits out the ratio. Right. So when we say this, we're saying I input some angle, it spit out the ratio of one half. What's the angle that I that I um, that I plugged in to sign. And in a way, what we're doing is we're doing it backwards, right? I'm given the ratio and I want to know the angle. So one thing I can do is just kind of look it up. So sine is height. So it happens here, right? There's a height of one half right there. But notice if I come straight across, it also happens here. So theta uh, would equal 30 degrees, but theta would also equal 150 degrees if I was solving this. Both of these angles, uh, if I take sine of them, give me a ratio of one half. So what I want to do is I want to find a function that actually kind of does this work for me. Now notice what's interesting is there were, there were two answers here. So a function can really only give me one answer for a question. It's called arc sine, or it's called the inverse sine. And so inverse sine of some value will give me an angle. So if I go arc sine of one half, this is asking, um, this is basically running this backwards. So inverse sine, what happens is you actually put the ratio in and it spits out an angle. Now this is a this is a function. Uh, this this arc sine, this inverse sine, is a function. That means if I have one input, I can only have one output. It can't give me both of these outputs. It's only going to give me one of them. What it's going to give me is it's going to give me this one. It's going to give me 30, 30 degrees. Or if I'm in radians, it'll give me, you know, pi over six. Now let's keep thinking about function. This notation, this this negative one, um, we mean this in the in the inverse idea of this notation. F, if I have f of x, it's inverse. I can write it as f inverse of x. This does not mean to the negative one power. This doesn't mean, you know, like if I go five to the negative one power, that's one fifth. It's a different notation. It's unfortunate that we use that, that same notation for both of them. So this means inverse sine or, or arc sine. Now let me go um, inverse sine on my calculator of uh, do, do, do of one half and, and see what I get. And before I do that, I'm going to get my answer in degree. I'm in radians right now, so I can switch over to degrees and go quit. So notice that if sine is here, it's inverse arc sine is on the board. So if I go second and then that button, I have arc sine and I want to take it of one half. And notice it just gives me the 30. It doesn't give me the 150 like, uh, like, I could rationalize. So it doesn't give me all the possibilities. It just gives me one possibility. So uh, notice that when I went inverse sine of one half, I got 30 degrees. This, this idea that it can only give me one answer, let me do an analogy um, over here. So if I think about like uh, x squared equals 25. Now notice that's asking for all the x's that if I square them, they give me 25. And we know there's two answers to this. There's, there's negative five and there's five. There's two possibilities. Now the way you can get there is go by using square root. But square root itself, if I just say square root of 25 on its own, and it doesn't have this context to it, the answer is just five. That keeps square root as a, uh, as a function. It's the same idea. So square root itself only returns one answer, even though when I use it here, there are two possibilities that I find. Same thing with arc sine. Arc sine only gives me one answer even though there could be multiple, and there could be even more than this, right? What if I went um, 360 plus that, 390 degrees, or 360 uh, plus that?
there's an infinite number I don't want I can't have a function spitting out an infinite number it can only give me one answer so like I was saying um, inverse sine also called arc sine can only return one value and it's going to again bring in a ratio and it'll output an angle now inverse sine will will uh, will give us values in the first and fourth quadrant only so if I ask for inverse sine of root 3 over 2 that's height notice it happens in a couple of places but it's only going to give me the answer in the first or fourth quadrant so it's here so it would be um, pi over 3 or it would be 60 degrees depending if I'm in radians or, or degrees now the thing about um, arc sine that that's kind of funny is notice that this goes up from 0 to 90 degrees and then if we if we were to uh, you know 0 to 90 degrees here if we were to go this way then it would pick up again at 270 and then go to 360 and that would make our range of answers have this big gap in it so to fix that what we do is instead of going uh, just 0 to 90 we also go 0 to negative 90 so it goes from negative 90 to 90 so any answer that's down here arc sine will return it as a negative value so for instance if I wanted to find um, arc sine of negative one-half well negative one-half I'm not even going to think about this side height of negative one-half is here at 330 degrees but arc sine will not return return 330 degrees it'll return it as a negative rotation and you can kind of you know you can go 360 minus 330 to get there but you can also just see the symmetry here if this is 30 degrees this must be negative 30 degrees so arc sine would re would return negative 30 degrees and then if it was going to return it as a uh, in radians it would be negative pi over 6. You can do, again you can just see the symmetry there to save yourself a little bit of arithmetic. So arc sine only returns values um, in the first and fourth quadrant and it its output is from negative 90 to 90. So um, that's how we undo sine. We can also do undo cosine. Inverse cosine. So how about if I said what's the inverse cosine of one half? So inverse cosine, cosine is about width. I'm just going to get a different color here. So when is it one half? It's here, but it's also one half here. So we have to choose which one it is. And it's actually the, the simplest one. It's the 60, it's the 60 degrees, or I would say pi over three if we were in radians. And uh, the nice thing about inverse cosine it always returns positive values. Notice we just have this nice continuous flow of values for um, for x that go from positive to negative. So inverse cosine returns values in the first and the second quadrant. And one thing that might help you, you know, think about that is this is, is since sine's height, the first quadrant takes care of the positive versions of height. And the fourth quadrant takes care of negative versions of height. Uh, similarly, for cosine, the first quadrant gives us uh, positive versions of width, and the second quadrant gives us negative versions of width. So it's it's going through all of these possibilities from here to here. Uh, let's do another inverse cosine one. Inverse cosine of uh, root three over two. So root three over two positive it's here 30 degrees or we could find something like cosine of um, negative root 2 over 2 cosine's width so we're looking for a width and an x value of negative root 2 over 2 it happens here it happens here too but we don't use this one cos inverse cosine sorry inverse cosine of that would spit out 135 degrees which is the same as uh, 3 pi over four. Um, we could also talk about inverse tangent. So inverse tangent 
Um, inverse tangent is kind of interesting in that it actually uh, does the same thing as sine. We can have positive and negative tangents. So sine is first and fourth quadrant, so is tangent. So I'll just say there and there. So if I asked for the inverse tangent of, say, negative 1, now this one is going to take a little bit more work. I know that tangent is y over x. So the ratio that I'm putting into here is y over x. So it must have been something divided by itself where one of them is negative. Well, they're both positive here. Here, something divided by itself where they're both negative. 315. So it's at here at 315. But just like inverse sine, tangent won't return uh that positive 315, it'll turn, return the negative version of this. So this would be negative 45 degrees, uh, which would be the same as negative pi over 4. And um, you, when you start to think about like the, the root 3s, let's say I want inverse tangent of root 3. Um, it's y over x. Notice that it's just a root 3. So this would be the same as root 3 over 1. So it's going to be where y has the root 3 in it because the 1 halves cancel out. Like this is the same as root 3 over 2 over 1 half. So this would be 60 degrees. So notice I can do this kind of this like lookup table stuff on this uh, on these inverses. It'll give me that. What I really have to be careful of are a couple things. I have to think about where these return values. Inverse sine and inverse uh, tangent only return values in the first and fourth quadrants and they return things from negative 90 to 90. So if it's down here, it's going to be a negative uh, value. And then inverse cosine returns values in the first and uh, second quadrant. That one's, that one's pretty straightforward. All right, I'm going to clean this up a little bit and then we're going to uh, do a little bit more work with this thinking about what's, what's, uh, what's what. All right, so um, let me calculate a couple of these. So I have inverse sine of sine of pi over 3. So there's a couple things going on here. So first off, uh, sine of pi over 3 is a certain value. I'm going to find what that is, and then I'm going to uh, inverse sine that, arc sine that. So these are these are inverses, so it feels like they should undo each other. Um, and they, they do roughly, not, not exactly all the time. So let's see what happens here. Sine of pi over 3. Pi over 3 is here. Sine is height. That's root 3 over 2. So this value right here is root 3 over 2. And so now if I go inverse sine of root 3 over 2, um, now I, I'm given the ratio and I'm looking for an angle. So the height is root 3 over 2. So the ratio must be pi over 3. And notice in this case, I get the same value back. right? Because sine of pi over 3 was here in the first quadrant. I got that ratio, and then I just got the ratio back to the angle. Sine and inverse sine undid each other. Plugged in the angle, got the ratio. Plugged in the ratio, got the angle back out. All right, let's take a look at this next one. Um, inverse sine of sine of 2 pi over 3. So 2 pi over 3 is here. Sine is height. So this value right here, sine of 2 pi over 3, will be root 3 over 2. So if I didn't think about that, I would just say, oh, the answer is just 2 pi over 3. It gives it to me back. But notice that arc sine, as we know, only will return values from here to here. So even though this has a height of, of root 3 over 2, if I bring that symmetry across here, this also has a height of root 3 over 2. And arc sine will only return these values here. So if I go arc sine of root 3 over 2, the answer is 60. Um, or since I was in radians, pi over 3. So notice that even though I, I started with different angles, they both had the same height. So the arc sign kicked me back into that first quadrant. And it's nice that it has this kind of the symmetry to it. Uh, let me do another problem that's like this. How about if I went um, arc sine of sine of uh, 225 degrees. So sine of 225 degrees. 225 degrees is here, sine is height, so the height 
is root is negative root 2 over 2. So this right here evaluates to negative root 2 over 2. And now if I take the arc sign of that, the answer is not going to be 225 back. It's going to come across to the same height, but be in this uh, quadrant 4. And it's tempting to write 315, but it's not 315. Remember, it's we have to treat this as a negative rotation for arc sign. So it would be negative 45 degrees. And from that 315, you can go like 315 minus 360 to get negative 45, or you can see that it is the same as, as this, right? That's the positive rotation, negative rotation of the same amount. Let's try some of these with, uh, with cosine. So inverse cosine of cosine of pi over four. Cosine of pi over four, pi over four is here. Cosine is width, so it's root two over two. So now I'm finding inverse cosine of root two over two. I'm staying in that first quadrant. So when I inverse cosine it, I take this ratio, it's gonna spit back out that same angle, pi over four. All right, next one, inverse cosine of cosine of five pi over three. So five pi over three is here. And cosine is width, it's one half. So this, is one half. And now notice if I arc cosine that, arc cosine, inverse cosine only gives me values here to here. So it's not going to give me a 300. Um, but the other value that has a width of one half is right here. Again, there's this kind of symmetry right across the x-axis. So it's 60 degrees or pi over three. And since this was in, in uh, radians, I'll put that in radians. So notice it's the same width, but it has to be this positive version of it, not the negative. It's just a quirk of these functions. Um, inverse cosine of cosine of 7 pi over 4. 7 pi over 4 is about here. Inverse cosine is that. And I can tell then, boop, it must be this, pi over 4. So we've been finding these, these values of, of inverse sine and inverse cosine, um, it, the exact values of them. And when we can look them up on the unit circle, that's, that's great. That works really well for us. But sometimes we don't. Like, let's say I wanted to go inverse sine of, point, uh, of 0.35. I'm not going to find 0.35 on unit circle, but uh, I could do this. Oh, that's interesting. Look, I'm in radians. Um, so if I look at the mode that I'm in right now, I'm in radians. So that was how many radians that would be. I could do it in degrees as well. That would tell me about how many degrees I have. So like notice if I go inverse sine of uh, root two, close it off, divided by two. Um, I know that's 45 degrees. It gives me the 45 degrees, which is great. So I can get the exact answer uh, if I don't have to round, uh, in some cases in degrees on my calculator. But notice, I'll go back into radians. Notice if I do that when I'm in radians, it gives me this. So that, if I'm looking for an exact answer, I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna have to use the unit circle to, to think about it or, or know some stuff. I know that this is 45 degrees. What's 45 degrees, pi over four? Yeah, see how that's the same. I would have to, I would have to know that though, um, in order to get there. If it's asking for an exact answer, it's going to be best to use unit circle. Um, but you can use a calculator to maybe check some values. And later on, when we're doing applications, we'll do that as well. All right, there's one more, one more thing I want to, I want to do, and we're going to step completely away from unit circle. The sine, of the inverse sine, of one fifth. If I had a ratio of one fifth and I was finding it, its sine, this would be height and hypotenuse. So that would be one, that would be five, and that would be my theta. And so notice um, this is theta. And then if I go sine of that same angle, it's going to give me one fifth back. So how about if I had something, if I ask you to find sine of inverse sine of five thirds? This would be the ratio, and remember sine's ratio is opposite over hypotenuse. 
So that means the opposite side would be 5 long and the hypotenuse would be 3 long. And that would be my theta. So hold up for one second here. If I had a right triangle, this hypotenuse should be the longest side. Like this is this is impossible. I can't I can't have I can't have a triangle like this. I can draw it, but the drawing doesn't make any sense. Like this side here must be shorter than that side. A squared plus five squared has to equal three squared. This will always be bigger than three squared, um, you know, as long as these are reals. So asking inverse sine of something greater than one, it's nonsense. It, it, there's no solution to this. So we would say no solution. If you try this on your calculator, you'll get you'll get an error. You'll get a domain error, um, and that's because remember sine, and the same thing is true for cosine. Uh, sine's height, the high it, the highest it gets is one, and the lowest it gets is negative one, and this ratio can't be bigger than one. So if I'm asked for arc sine or uh, or inverse cosine of something bigger than one. There's going to be no solution that, that doesn't work. Great. So give these a try uh, while you're working on. Remember, inverse sine only and inverse tangent will return uh, values here. Inverse cosine will only return values there. Post questions in the forums. Message me with questions. Good luck with the homework.